We talk about food. We talk about music with musical dudes. Finger on the pulse, snacky tunes. To snacky oh, tunes, man. That is Oberhofer, who will be live in studio today, and actually will be our last live performance in studio of the year. Who's next week? We have Beg to Differ at the DJ set. It's different. It's different. It's different. You're listening to Snacky Tunes on Heritage Radio Network. I'm one half of your host, Ted Diabolic, finger on the pulse. With me is the always pleasant and bearded, sometimes bearded DJ. Never forget. Better than last week. Last week you were in trouble. Last week I was in trouble. You you were struggling, but uh, we are here today. It is December. Uh, the chill has set in, and Robertus has built this. Like all the uh, construction you heard on last week's show has actually turned into this really nice covered outdoor seating area. Yes, which may or may not uh, double as a greenhouse come summer if they don't know how to take the top off. Pop the top off. Pop the top. Listen, uh, one of the best things about the way television works these days is that you no longer have to wait for the September time of year to roll around for new shows. Uh, it's essentially new things are getting debuted all the time. And we are joined today by Chef Richard Blaze, who is going to be, who is on and will be on one but not two shows uh, this winter. Richard, how are you? Hey, what's going on? Good, to, good to hear from you, my man. Good to hear from you. How is Atlanta? Uh, it's twenty degrees right now, actually. Wow, if you can believe that? That's worse people than us. Yeah, people think it's hot Atlanta, but it's it's quite it's quite chilly today. So, Richard, you are uh, debuting in two shows this month. The first one was Top Chef Masters, which just uh, aired its second episode last week. And, That's right. Uh, and uh, safe to say you're still alive. Still alive. You know, I'll, I'll be around Wednesday night for sure. So, you know, I can't really talk about the show, but so far so good. And uh, we'll be on the screen Wednesday night. Awesome. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about what happened in the first episode? 
uh, with the going over the uh, the time limit and how things may or may not been perceived as they actually happened? Uh, sure, you're going like right to the hardcore questions. Right, like, to, right it, in. Exactly, it's serious stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, I went over the limit, so that that's you know what you saw on the TV is what happened. But um, certainly, you know, things are. Uh, a little bit more confusing than you know maybe what was you know shown on the on the television screen. Um, you know that being said, you know the, a, a buzzer went off. I was you know finishing my plate. You know what I can say is, you know nothing was being done to the plate that changed the flavor of it. I was really just sort of polishing the dish and right. Uh, you know didn't hear the beeper and uh, that's kind of what happened. You saw what happened. Well, so it goes. I, I I'm sure that. Uh... You, you, and your fans have nothing to worry about for us this season. I'm sure you get, you'll do well, and we'll see you for many weeks to come. You, you can't put the guy on spot like that. He already said he didn't want to talk about it. I know. I'm just. I'm offering my. I'm, <laughs> I'm just. I'm. Just, I mean, you. You can try and backdoor it. He'll be there Wednesday. Okay. And that's all you can say. All right. I'll be there Wednesday. Richard, I got your back. All right. Uh, but good season this year. I had a lot of fun getting to hang out with uh, pre- past cast members and people that you had seen on other episodes. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's definitely, you know, the, the competition is fierce, and um, the camaraderie was also amazing. I mean, I think the, the neatest thing about, you know, working with everyone was the educational side of things and really getting a chance to learn. You know, I mean, as a chef, that's what we do every day. If we're not learning, then, you know, it's not a good day. And um, I think that was, to me, you know, that, that's the best part of, of, of this season is just you have so many different diverse styles and, you know, and personalities and, you know, the, the competition, is the pressure is so intense that it was just, you know, it made for some uh, good educating, for sure. And uh, I know that you probably keep in touch with the people from your season, but cross-season, how uh, how much interaction is there? Was there a lot of new faces, or if you're once, you know, part of the Top Chef family, you kind of meet each other uh, over the seasons? Yeah, I mean, I would say that it's definitely, I, I've never been in a fraternity or a sorority, but I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm guessing, I, I'm, that's, that's pretty much what it is, you know, it's, you're the class of this year versus the class of the next year, but you you sort of uh, you know get to know people. You do different events and you do different functions, and it is one family. And it's 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 rare that you know you don't know some. I think on this cast of All Stars, I think there was maybe one or two people that I had not worked with uh, prior to filming. So we, we all know each other, and we you know that that makes the competition I think a lot different as well, since you kind of do know uh, the people that you're competing against. And you sort of get an insight looking at their seasons of what they're going to cook. It's not like uh, you're just in it, you know, sort of blind, right? Exactly. You know a little bit about them, and, you know, I think that that's a good and, and a bad thing because you kind of know what people's personalities are. You know, some people might know what buttons to push and, um, you know, how people also have sort of just been, you know, perceived. You know, you're, I'm also a fan, you know, of, of Food TV and, and Top Chef. So a lot of, you know, what was interesting to me is a lot of these people that you see that you have, you know, you're like, oh, that guy, you know, he can't cook, or this person over here is all about personality. You know, you get to know them, and you realize that, you know, uh, you know, everyone actually can cook, even if they have strong personalities. That, you know, it's a pretty talented group. Right. Um, so the other show that's coming out, it's coming out this Friday, 17 Science Channel, 10 p.m. is Blaze Off, uh, which Blaze is Off. Blaze Off, which uh, you hosted, I directed, and uh, I've seen the first two episodes, and they're fantastic. If I must say. Well, well, you know what? The direction was fantastic. We'll you know, see how the host went. Let's just do full disclosure here. Yeah. Darren was a director. I said that. Oh, you did? Yeah. All right, we're just going to reiterate it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Richard, why don't you tell us about the premise of the show and what people can expect uh, this weekend or this week? Uh, I mean, the premise of the show is to see if science and technology and creativity can take iconic foods and hopefully make them better and, and, and at least more interesting. So I think... Um, that's kind of neat. You know, we go up against an iconic American food. I think the first episode is pizza. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we see if we can, you know, engineer a slice of pizza that goes up against a traditional New York City slice and eat it in a, a taste-off. Now, uh, you know, part of the thing that's great about this show is that you were both sort of a, a teacher and a student uh, going to Patsy's and then being in your own kitchen. Can you talk to me about some of the things you learned about uh, making pizza while taping? Um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, back to the education. I mean, that, that, that is the first part of the show is really learning how, you know, whatever restaurant we're in does their signature dish. So at Patsy's, I'm learning how to make pizza that's, um, you know, known as one of the best, you know, slices in New York and, and probably nationwide. And, uh, you know, I mean, I learned a lot. I learned so much that I've made pizza dough 
almost every other day or some sort of bread almost every other day since we filmed just uh, because I was so inspired by, um, you know, the science behind actually great pizza. Um, so I don't know if that makes any sense, but I, you know, it's, it's inspiring. I learned a lot. I'm glad you actually brought the science because one of the things I like about this show and makes it different than a lot of other cooking shows is that it really gets into the why. A little bit of the Howard McGee sort of what's going on when you turn on the heat or when you ice something down. And that also represents a lot of the cooking that you do. You explore the, the whys and the connections between different flavors and tastes. Yeah, I mean, I think when you get into why things happen, it, it opens up, uh, you know, the door to experimentation. And then uh, often, you know, more often than not, that leads to, you know, uh, discovery, if you will, of, you know, how to make something taste better or, or, or look better and, uh, you know, make it a better eating experience. So, um, yeah, we're, we're into that. We're into messing things up and experimenting and, uh, trial and error for sure. Awesome. Well, we're going to play a quick song and then come back and we're talk about uh, Trailblaze and Flip Burger and all the things culinary that's going down in Hot Atlanta. Right on. Uh, you're listening to Snacky Tunes. we got Chef Richard Blaze calling in. Uh, I'm Terry Diabolic. Do you uh, can't forget, let's talk about who sponsored us today. Big shout out to The Barter House, who is a proud sponsor of Heritage Radio Network. That's us. And it's a community of food lovers. The Barter House works with family vi- vineyards. Vineyards? Vineyards. A small bottle there from around the world to bring only the finest and most flavorful wines to market. Committed to sustainable, agricultural, and artisanal products, uh, the Barter House offers outstanding wines at a wide range of price points, street tailors, restauranteurs, and private collectors. To learn more, please visit them on the web at thebarterhouse.com or call them at 917-463-3076. Barter House, for your wine. For your wine. And, yeah, and uh, how is that pizza going over there? This pizza is amazing. Okay, so we are going to play a song right now by How to Dress Well, and then we're going to get back to Richard Blaze. Right, how to dress well? Mm-hmm. Band watch two thousand eleven, two thousand ten. I feel okay. you wanna, yeah. Okay, so uh, we are on the phone with Richard Blaze, uh, known as Top Chef Master, host of Blaze Off, and we are talking to him about his restaurants down in Atlanta. Uh, one of the things that you dealt with in uh, Blaze Off was making burgers, and you own uh, three burger, or you you uh, consult for three burger places called Flip down in Atlanta. Is that right? Yeah, Flip Burger Boutique. So um, we have three locations right now, two in Atlanta, one in Birmingham, Alabama, and one getting ready to uh, open soon in Washington, D.C. So Flip Burger is uh, pretty much the Jetsons meets the hamburger restaurant. And so you have the Rosie? What's that? No, that's a, a terrible <laughs> Jetson reference. So talk to me. Right. Uh, talk to Rosie. me. Rosie. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's all right. So talk to me about Flip Burger because it's more than just a, a burger shop, and it's even more than you know the whole gourmet burger trend of you know Shake Shack and things like that. Like it takes burgers to the next level. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think you know a couple of the main 
uh, things that you know separate us from a lot of uh, you know other burger concepts is that we do use you know all of these techniques um, and styles that you, you see uh, you see that I use on Top Chef and and Blaze Off. Uh, you know if you want to call it molecular gastronomy, that's fine. But you know sous vide burgers, liquid nitrogen milkshakes. You know there's, there's a menu of 20 to 25 different proteins, and you know all of that science and 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 creativity. You know done with you know food and flavors that we all know and, and enjoy. So it's, and it's more of a restaurant. You know, it's not like you just go on there, you, you wait online, you get a number, and then here comes, you know, your, your burger and your order of fries. It's a sit-down, you know, more of a fine dining experience. And, and you do more than just hamburgers, right? You have, uh, the, like, the Duck Duck Goose Burger. What is that? Yeah, I mean, you know, everything, uh, you know, it's burgers and then sides and, you know, fried items, of course. But, you know, our protein, Duck Duck Goose, you know, we, instead of, Using beef, you know, ground up. We're using duck that's ground, and you know, we're we're coating it with a layer of foie gras and you know, crispy goose skin. And you know, there's there, half of the menu is pretty much simple, uh, not simple, but you know, beef preparations. The other half of the menu sort of gets into some of the other uh, proteins, whether it's you know, ground shrimp or in this case, duck um, or you know, chorizo or asabuco. It's it's you know, anything. You know, the idea is that if you came to Flip Burger, like you would go to a your corner restaurant and you wanted chicken or you wanted seafood, those options are available. They just happen to be engineered into a burger. So in addition to Flip Burger, uh, you also do Trailblaze, which is your culinary consulting company? Yeah, Trailblaze is, you know, anything that I do outside of uh, Flip Burger right now and, or you know, the stuff that we do on TV. So it's consulting for other restaurants. It's demonstrating, lecturing around the country, uh, working with a lot of products. Um, you know, I'm working with a sous vide uh, company sous vide supreme is the the first sous vide unit available for the home cook um so it's it's more on the sort of uh the product development side and consultant side you know a lot of times when people look at the type of food that you do um it can be intimidating at times but you've actually done a really good job of taking the science uh or the mystery out of the science and making it available and acceptable for people at home what's the biggest thing you could recommend if someone wants to push their cooking to the next level i i think the, the biggest thing to consider, and I think, um, you know, what what we do well at my, our restaurants is to to start with the flavors that people love, you know, and, and I think Blaze Off really illustrates that. Mm-hmm. You can use creativity in science, but as long as you're starting with a hamburger, people are familiar with that, pizza, people are familiar with that, it kind of uh, enables you to, to be more creative and to have those creations accepted. So when you start experimenting and you start getting inspired, you look at flavors first and then you move on to textures? Yeah, I would say I would say you know we want to start with hey, what do you want to eat right now? I right. think that's always a good good question for a chef. I think sometimes you know my, we can get caught up you know uh, chefs that play in this genre or, or this box, we can get caught up in you know wanting to do something that's so new or or extreme, and we end up with you know cola nuts and eucalyptus and you know a, a lot of great flavors, but sometimes you know they're just too far out there. You know, and, and definitely uh, you know with my food, I want people to recognize at least the flavors as they're written on, on, on paper, and then, you know, kind of under-promise and over-deliver when they get it, say, oh, wow, that was more than a burger or more than pizza. So as uh, 2010 wraps up and we start looking to 2011, what do you think some of the trends are going to be for next year for food and for sort of the type of food that you do? Um, I, I really think, you know, just kind of continuing the last thought, that you're going to see this, this, this bridge sort of combine beautiful farm-to-table food and, you know, again, molecular gastronomy or, or creative food. I, I think that they've sort of been, they've been separated like East Coast, West Coast, hip-hop wars. You know, like, you know, it, you're either simple and beautiful and organic and farm to table or you're, you know, super high tech. And I think that we're going to sort of get into this you know, area where everyone gets along and uh, you're seeing both types of food. You know, my food's farm to table. It just happens to be farm to liquid nitrogen tank to table. <laughs> right. Take, right. And, take, takes a little stop in the laboratory before it gets to the plate, right? Exactly, but you still need those beautiful ingredients, and um, I think you're going to see the, those sort of things come together. Now, I know that you're a big music fan. What do you listen to when you're getting inspired to cook or you're just working the line at your restaurant? Um, you know, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm intimidated by you asking me music questions. Oh, so, come on, man. Um, you know, I, and I have a two-and-a-half-year-old, so uh, I'm going to kind of – she, she's the one who sort of decides, you know, what's on the – What's on the radio or what's on the on the uh, sound system? It's a lot of uh, blues clues, things like that. 
Soundtrack? Yeah, you know, no, she's got she's got a little bit, you know, she's got a, a nice ear, you know, a little bit past Blue's Clues and, you know, some of the Snoopy and Charlie Brown stuff. But, she's, you know, I'm almost embarrassed to say, but she's really into Vampire Weekend right now. That's great. That's fine. Like that, she, that's good cooking that's, music. Yeah. Okay, good. She, we turn on Vampire Weekend and she starts dancing. And she requests it. So I for two and a half years old. That's kind of all that really is a requirement for yeah. that young age if they'll dance to it. Yeah, but I'm sure she's brought some, like, favorite stuff like the Muppets Take Manhattan B-Sides. There's some really good deep cuts there. <laughs> Uh, nice. Uh, well, Richard, as always, it's a pleasure hearing from you. I'm glad things are doing so well. When are you going to get back up to New York? When are you give people a uh, taste of your food up here? Uh, you know, I was just there last week at the James Beard House, and I'm, I'm finding myself there um, you know, more often than not, so very soon, hopefully. Awesome, Richard. Well, thank you so much. Say hello to everyone, your family. hope everyone's doing well. And uh, we got Top Chef this Wednesday on Bravo, and we have Blaze Off this Friday at uh, 10 p.m. on the on Science Channel. Awesome. Can't wait. Hey, congratulations, man. I uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks, guys. Wow. Guy's awesome. Yeah, he's really great. Great guy. Do, um, you know, do you know his work? Yeah. He's, he does awesome food. His, his burger and his pizza that he made were fantastic. Uh, speaking of pizza, I want to eat a little bit more, so why don't we play a few songs, <laughs> and then uh, we'll have Brad from Oberhofer, <laughs> a.k.a. Brad Oberhofer, name, same last name as the band, uh, in live in studio. Yeah? Yeah. Does that sound? Yeah, it sounds great. Okay. Uh, so you're listening to Snacky Tunes. We're your host, Finger on the Pulse. Hello. Big shout Snacky out to... Tunes. <laughs> That's a drop. That's that a actually drop. was pre-recorded. Uh, big, big out to the Barter House for your wine. For your wine. And uh, coming up, we have songs from New Tory Ma, New Computer Magic, and then the new Y Oak. All Wait, through. new New Tory Ma? Do you put on... Like, app? single, like... Single was in my inbox while we were doing the interview, and I downloaded it, and we're going to play it right now. That guy is prolific. Yeah. So this is brand new. It's off his new record that's coming out in, uh, in a couple weeks. He's got a... All right. Snacky Tunes. Here we go. Here we go.
Fun. Yeah, just just take it That's out. Good. Is it's that, really good. Is that a live remix? Yeah. Uh, I'm a, Snacky <laughs> Tunes exclusive. DJ and Forget live Tori Moi remix. Yeah, mouth mix. Oh, actually, that's more of an edit. That's more of an edit. Um, that was actually still sound off the uh, brand new record that's coming out in January. Before that was Computer Magic, The End of Time, uh, who's actually Danzy, if you remember, was on here under the name Space Base. And if you want to check out that uh, episode, you can actually go to our podcast. Just search Snacky Tunes in iTunes. And to start that off was uh, Why Oak Civilian. Brad from Oberhofer is here, and he was actually saying something about the label, about the Why Oak people, then their label. Yeah, they're they're on this label called Partisan, and um, mm-hmm. it's basically just a bunch of people that are really passionate about songwriting and people who write good songs. And um, they're, they're all just about the music. Which is awesome because that's what so much of us are about these yeah. days. And not actually not enough of us musicians are all about that. So it's, what, it's what else are musicians about? Um, sometimes sometimes musicians are about uh, fitting an image, and there there is an image that is uh, very prominent right now within music, especially here in Brooklyn. And um, I feel like this label is really interesting because uh, they're they're all about songs. Uh, I mean, it's a good point. Uh, but let, let's let's step back and introduce you. Oh. Hi, welcome to Snacky Tunes. Snack attack. Yeah, snack attack. Uh, Brad is one quarter of Oberhof- Oberhofer and also has the same last name uh, and is a gracious guest on the show who uh, decided to join us today and come and play live and eat pizza with us and promised us a lot of opinions. Yeah, and I opi- have them. He has them. Um, why don't you give our listeners a, a small background on the band, like th- your elevator pitch, 30 seconds. All right, 30 seconds. Um, I'm from Tacoma, Washington, and um, I started out recording songs in my parents' basement, like like many others, and uh, came to New York, met a bunch of friends, and decided to play in a band with them. Uh, speaking of your parents' house, I read somewhere that it burned down. Is that totally? Ins- am I totally wrong on that? No, you're you're actually mostly right. It didn't all the way burn down, or it was like a no. It was a brick house, so it uh, uh, it maintained just the interior. Uh, wow, was anybody hurt? No, no one was hurt. My dog was fine. Okay, so that's the important things. Uh, so when did you come to New York? <laughs> um, I actually moved to New York uh, nearly two and a half years ago uh, to go to school at New York University. And you are in finals right now, right? Or just finishing? Yeah, yeah still in finals. This week is going to be nuts. Allow me to tell you things that you will never miss once you graduate from college. Term papers, finals, midterms. Uh, my night, you know, my nightmares, my stress nightmares, uh, when I think about real big things, is always me being back in school. And then I have a lot of work to do, and I'm not doing it. Yeah, that'll be mine, too. I'll be like, oh, my God, how am I? How have I missed two years of math class? And then I'll wake up and be like, I'm not in college anymore. Yeah. But you're studying something that applies. What are you studying? Music theory and composition. So, you know, it'll apply to what you're doing right now. Hopefully someday. Do, actually, I, I, I was just to say, do you see it ap- applying at all to your songwriting process or to what you're doing? Or is there still, like, a disconnect between what you're, still, you're studying and what you're practicing? Well, um, I think that, you know, studying music theory harv- harnesses my, you know, my creative abilities. Um, and this is all just creativity. And it's it's less into intellectualized than orchestral music. And, like, you know, I think I subconsciously apply some music theory rules. But really, like, I'm, I, I don't really think so much about what I'm playing here. Do you have a, a more professional background in your training? Or are you just, like, you know, kid with a guitar in his parents' house? Um, well, as far as guitar playing goes, not at all. Um, really, I, I hardly understand theory on guitar. But um, as far as composition goes, I've been studying for a while. And um, what's know, a while? Um, well, I was a classically trained percussion, or I'm a classically trained percussionist. Studied that for seven years, and then took music theory courses and stuff. You know, in high school, and uh, studied that. You know, at school, take private lessons. Question: What is your favorite thing to bang on in percussion? Um, a timpani. Ooh. Ooh, good answer. I didn't see that one. All right. All right. And follow-up question, what's your favorite thing to bang? Ah! ah. Snack attack. Snack attack. Snack attack. Let's right. play a song. Let's do that. Yeah. All okay. Right. Uh, so tell us what you're going to play. Uh, this song is called Away From You. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, live on Snacky Tunes. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh. 
you're pushing me away from you And there's nothing I can do And I can't fight all of your battles for you You're pushing me away from you Oh, and I know what I'll do I'll hop the fit so I can't get out of this mess You're pushing me away from you And there's nothing I can do And I can't fight all of your battles for you You're pushing me away from you Oh, and I know what I'll do Yeah, I know what I'll do I know what I'll do I'll get you out, out my mind You're pushing me away from you And there's nothing I can do And I can't fight all of your battles for you You're pushing me away from you Oh, and I know what I'll do I'll get you right, pick you up right I'll get you right, pick you up right I'll get you right, pick you up right On time Woo! Woo! And what's the name of that song again? Away from you. Can I get that anywhere? Yeah, you can get it on um, our MySpace. We're gonna have a seven inch coming out January 11th, and it'll be available through um, pre-order on InSound until then. Uh, so we were talking about labels before, and you don't need to name the labels that you're talking with, but you're currently in the process of trying to find a home for your music. Yeah. Uh, and take us through that process, because uh, we've had varying levels of established artists on here, people who've had their labels for 20 years, people who are just starting out. So as a band that is that has hype and has had a strong year of, of playing and, and press and great CMJ and all the, all the right pieces, where do you find yourself and how do you find the process? Well, um, you have to figure out where your morals stand and you have to figure out uh, what you want. And... Um you know, as a general rule in life, it's always the best thing to figure out the mo- the most uh, moral moral option possible, and uh, so you have to decide: is it more moral to be with a company that uh, that exploits that exploits a system that push that imposes music on people in order to get your music widespread because you believe you have a, you have a great message, or is it more important to be involved with people that you see um, that you see to have a more family oriented ideal? The way you kind of phrase it, it seems like the latter is the obvious choice. Oh, but it's not. Oh, I I, I don't think that's the obvious choice. Mm-mm. So where do you have a do you have a place where you're leaning? Or are you still in the midst between those two positions? And is there any label that falls in the middle that offers the best the best of both worlds? Um, there may or may not be a label that falls <laughs> uh that falls in the middle, um that lends itself to both both properties. Um. Both the positive attributes of both, um, and I'm actually I'm leaning more towards the latter. However, if you do, you know, if you do exploit the sort of capitalist system that is functioning within music right now, um, eventually you can get to a point where you can you can maybe voice against it, 
or you could try to change the way music works and you could try to change what you don't like about music because you've gained so much popularity by utilizing that system which is so <laughs> hypocritical right until someone's like uh except that if you didn't have those <laughs> systems in place you wouldn't be able to be in this position exactly to it. so uh what are some of the more like if you feel comfortable talking about dastardly things that have been offered or some of the wild promises that have been offered to you uh along this process um you know we haven't actually been been offered anything ex- extremely outrageous uh once I was uh, I was asked to um, give my song for free to the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition DVD, and um, I was talking I was talking to the guy and I was saying, "Sorry, uh, it it just doesn't abide by my morals. Um, I'm I'm just not down with it." And he was like, he was like, "I'm not peddling smut around. These aren't just girls with daddy issues." And it just like proved to me that this guy was actually extremely ignorant, and he was like, "Wow, it, it got real." Yeah, that, it, that guy took it. You're like, uh, you know, I'm not down with this, and then his, all of his insecurities just you know yeah. popped right up. Yeah, they know? totally did, and I was just like, dude, honestly, like this, you know, that part of this is wrong somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah with that reaction. Uh, so you say you're from Tacoma. Do you get yeah. to go home often, or are you mostly uh, stuck in New York? Um, I get to go home. I get to go home often enough, but only for a week at a time. You know, and uh, I wish I got to spend more time. But at this, you know, simultaneously, it's it's good to be here and to be productive and be setting things in place when you hit home you got a favorite place to eat or a favorite meal um yeah i do have a favorite meal my dad makes uh, delicious crepes and Ooh. um filled with filled with uh turkey apple and um there's a kind of cheese that's made by uh washington state university and it's called cougar <laughs> gold cheese and it's really it's a, a really good sharp cheddar <laughs> So we have crepes uh, filled with um, apples. Cougar gold. Cougar gold. Rawr. Snack attack. <laughs> Snack attack. <Yeah. laughs> that actually sounds really good. Yeah. Cougar gold? Well, the name The name is a little... <laughs> they probably had the name before the uh, it took on like, a, a societal... That is so like, regal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, how about this? In honor of your dad's crepes, let's play another song. All right, deal. Yeah. And what's, uh, what song is this? This song's called Ooh. Ooh. Oh, this is the uh, title track off your 7-inch. Indeed it is. Yeah. And I'll just keep on stumbling Right now it feels too humbling To tell you what I want And the city's feeling queer and crass With beer cans growing blades of grass To look like something new Whoa, oh, 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 oh That you love me, but I'm just too damn hungry for loving that I don't need. And I know that you like my shoes, but you wish you could count for every inch and every ounce of everything that you meet. And you'll die by the time you're 30. Slytherin snakes and garden rakes Don't got what it takes To give you what you need
Whoa. All right. Ooh, ooh. Uh, when writing out that song title, how did you figure out how many O's to put in that? Um, well, it's, it, well, it, it's, a uh, um, ooh, it's basically lowercase O to, it, it just, it just goes to like height and the, ooh, the peaks are zeros because that's the most elongated oh. of the O's you can find on the keyboard. Got it. Oh, and really? It's just, it's just based on the shape of the phrase. Amazing. Why are you making puns? I'm asking this guy serious questions. We can have fun. We can he's have a, fun. He's the Punisher. He's the oh. Punisher. Oh. You just got best at Snack Attack. Snack, snack Attack. attack. Uh, we got Oberhofer live on Snacky Tunes. Uh, you know, we never ask this question because it's such a, uh, you know, meh question, but I feel like just for the lyrics. Uh, That's how you're setting up the question? Yeah. Go, knock it out of the park. <laughs> Ready? Okay. I mean, it's a big Go for it. Home run. Home run. What's that song about? Um. Well, it's, it's, about, it's actually about two different things. There was, uh, there was one girl that... Uh, that I was, like, romantically involved with that was, like, a total stiff, kind of, you know? She, like, wouldn't do anything because she was a Jehovah's Witness and, like, her parents wouldn't let her, like, hang out with anyone. She, you know, she couldn't hang out with anyone. I wrote the song when I was, like, 16. Okay. And her parents wouldn't let her hang out with anyone. And so I was like, you'll die by the time you're 30. And she was, like, really, like, particular about everything. And then the other part is basically just about this other girl that I started dating later when I recorded the song who um was uh who basically depended on like drugs and like other guys to like make herself happy yikes yeah that is not Yo. conveyed i kind of wish i never asked we need like a bummer <laughs> what's no, up dude. teenage angst <laughs> yeah but it's a good song <laughs> Uh, you know, I wish you could have. Everyone could have seen the face and just hair shaking. I, I, I gotta perfect. say, I think we've we've learned on the show that a lot of good music comes out of some very dark places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, regardless of how uh, how good it sounds. Uh, so, talk to us about tour. You're taking a little time off from school, right? Yeah, yeah I'm taking a year off of school. Booyah! Wait, so the, spring break, whole spring year. Break. We were talking about this uh, before we got on. You told NYU that you're like, "Hey, I'm going on the road." Are they yeah. okay with things like that, considering you're a music theorist? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There, I actually haven't talked to my advisor in my in my music program. They've been pretty lenient with me. Uh, this semester, I took a month off to go touring, and um, they actually let me take incompletes in all of my classes for the most part. Just talked to my professors on you know like a one on one basis, and uh, your prof. I gotta yeah. go. Yeah, bro, if I gotta head out, I'm on I the mean, road. I it, mean, it'd be one thing if you were like, uh, I'm in biomed and I'm like taking off this semester to yeah. go try with my band, but they have to know that people in music theory might just so happen also be musicians. I think the same yeah. thing happened with uh, Andrew Bell, right? Yeah. We had it when we had Andrew Bell and he was in school as well, and yeah. he's like, my career's taken off, so... You'll you'll still Peace. be here. Yeah, they'll all still be here. Yeah, exactly. But uh, so is the, are the tours planned, or is it you're just opening up a year for yourself for the possibility? Well, not all the tours are completely confirmed. However, parts of them are. And um, in January, uh, for two weeks, we're going on tour with uh, Cloud Nothings for two weeks. Then we're playing two shows in New York with a band called The Vaccines, and then we're going on tour for a month with Tapes and Tapes. Oh whoa! And, and um, then, uh, then yeah, we're gonna head down to South by Southwest, and we're gonna play some other shows, and um, hopefully head to Europe in the spring. Oh, sounds good. So, where are you looking forward to eating the most? Um, well, I I'm really I'm really into ice cream, and um, every every time I go to a new town, I like to go running and then eat something really unhealthy. And usually, ice cream fills that void. It's uh, a good balance. Yeah, it's like the circle of life, right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I I really do like In and Out Burger. Like, I think it's really good. And, yeah. And um, I'm looking forward to that because it's a nostalgic flavor, and I don't often make it to the uh, Southwest Coast. You know. Do they not have it up in Washington? No, they don't. Okay. They have Dick's Burgers, which is almost as good. I've I've <laughs> eaten at Dick's. I yeah. used to live in Seattle. Yeah, but oh. you have. <laughs> Really? Yeah. I mean, I thought we, I thought we could yeah. avoid that. Snack attack. Snack attack. Snack attack. Uh, but that that's fantastic. Uh, so if you're not, are you signed to any label or like when you go to South by Southwest, who are you going to play with? Well, we're not signed to any label right now. We're putting out a seven inch January 11th with, uh, with a label called Inflated Records. It's a friend of mine, Dan. He's put out a Memory House seven inch and uh, DuckTales uh, 12 inch so far. So he's... Uh, He's got good things going on, and um, we made a really beautiful-looking 7-inch clear vinyl and beautiful artwork. So, um, uh, Do you have a hand in the design process for the artwork, or is it a sourced out to a, a talented friend? 
Um, well, for the for the Ooh 7 inch, it was my best friend Isaac back in Tacoma who made the album art, and I actually found antique photographs um, from Tacoma um, to use for the album art uh, on this for the 7 inch on January 11th. That's awesome. So uh, we're going to get into one last song, but before we do that, can we go through all the nuts and bolts, the listage, where can we find you online, all that good stuff? Yeah, um... Well, I have uh, re- records for sale on insound.com, and um, you can also check out our MySpace page, and that's myspace.com slash Oberhofer Music. Can you spell that? O-B-E-R-H-O-F-E-R, music. We'll let the fans uh, figure out music. Yeah, just just Google me. Yeah. And, uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. It was really great having you in here. You pleasure. Are, you're the last live performance we're going to have for 2010. I thought I thought I'm getting on the mic next week. All right. Well, he's gonna get on the mic, but for freestyle rapping. Yeah, freestyle. Carry on the mic next week. I'll yeah, I'm, I might beatbox a little behind him. I can him. beatbox well. Can you really? Yeah. Give us give us like sixteen. What? Come on. Tell me that's being worked into the show. No. For no, real. Yet. Not yet. I, I wanna, might. I might be in, involved in an anonymous hip hop project soon, though. That. Uh, well, okay. That was one. We'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll put it this way. Uh, we'll keep it anonymous, but you have to come back on the show when you guys form. All right. Deal? Oh man, that was awesome. Your jaw dropped. I literally watched your jaw dropped. You had like three noises coming out of your mouth at once. That's what living in Tacoma does. Yeah, triple threat. Yeah, oh, triple man. threat. All right. Well, my mind's blown. Thank you to the Barter House for your wine. Yeah, Barter House. Thank uh, thanks, Roberta, to Jack Inslee. Brad, thanks for joining us. Nick Knack, Patty Wack, Bradley on the Snack Attack. That's right. And a uh, big shout-out to Heritage Radio Network. Uh, we got crazy things coming up in 2011. We got one more show coming out this year. Thank you so much to Chef Richard Blaze. Please check out uh, Top Chef Masters on Bravo this Wednesday. And the debut of the show that he started and that I directed, uh, 10 p.m. Science Channel this Friday. Uh, write your local Congress plays off. Blaze off. And so what is the uh, name of this last song? Um, this song is called uh, Pets Slash House. House, H-A-U-S. Live on Snacky Tunes. All right. Here we go. with you, a house with you, a house with you, a home, so we can be alone, and I've been running, I've been hiding, I've been falling down and climbing back up, where they think they belong, oh let's go. Tell me what you don't
been slipping on my shoes, my tongue is swole, my lips are bruised, and I can't get up the hill. And I've been jumping through some leaves and chopping down some cherry trees, so I, oh, so I can't tell, so I can't tell the truth. Can be alone. 